that's heavy. <sighs> find me a full-time YouTube fisherman that can load that up, I'll find you a damn liar. She's first ice there, lube tube. Sneaking out here, first light. I've had a couple cold nights on just a little backcountry lake here. And there should be enough ice on it. Um, I always like to be the first one on these lakes for a bunch of reasons that we'll get into, but uh, should be good. Um, kind of just waiting for the sun to come up a little bit better here. Uh, maybe checking ice in the dark solo isn't such a great idea so just gearing up and we'll get out there shortly i'm not gonna go through the whole ice safety gambit there's lots of information on that um you know, if you're not comfortable with it this early then just don't go um i'm busting a couple rules yeah i'm going solo and it's kind of dark so like i said we're waiting for the light uh i've got my spud bar though and i got this new uh strike master pro suit it's got SOS, so she floats. Um, so just an, another added safety feature. Told uh, told my wife where I'm going. But you know all the safety tips. Get your spikes, get your gear, all that. But yeah, definitely if you can get a, a coat that floats, you're, you're gonna be better off. Um, back in the day, I used to have an old, it was like a Nautilus or Mustang or whatever it was, floater coat. And I looked like Ralphie off the Christmas store. You couldn't move, you were just, you know, punched out. It looked like you were wearing a cardboard box underneath. Now they're comfortable and uh, they're a lot more mainstream. So, I mean, if you're gonna go ice fishing, you may as well live. Packing pretty light here. Thing about first ice is you really don't need a whole bunch of equipment. And it's pretty nice. Gotta get a five gallon here. Okay. Auger, just have my super light little uh, Strike Master light flight. This thing's a weapon. I got the one of the first ones that uh, that kind of came out up here a few years ago, and I haven't touched it, a gas auger hardly since. So. Uh, this thing's been deadly. Um, I bring along this generator with me to, uh, you know, charge my battery and, and uh, you know, that's, that's going green, that's going electric. <laughs> I wonder how many people I got fired up saying that. Um, I'm sure a bunch of anti-electric people just lost their minds. Um, but no, that's a joke. I'm using that for work after. Um, you don't need to be charging your batteries like these things there's real there's no reason at all not to use electric whether it be the drill style light flight like this or like the 40 volt or the 24 volt strike master there's no reason at all like the only benefit i've seen to gas augers is you have something to dump on your on your shore lunch fire to get her going in tough conditions otherwise it's you know electric's the wave it's obvious so i've uh i've had probably more gas ice augers than well, anyone I know for sure, and uh, I don't miss them at all. So probably got enough light now where we're not gonna perish. It's not really the normal first ice right now. There's a sheet of snow on uh, on top of the ice, so you can't really see what's going on. So I'm just gonna spot along just near the shore here. Gonna do a little sampler. Uh, we might be turning around and getting the truck. <laughs> Look at all that. That's probably close to four and a half inches. That's plenty fine for this unit. One of the most concerning things about the ice on these little crappie lakes. Ooh.
is that uh, generally the crappies are in the deepest part of the lake you can find. And that's going to have the thinnest ice. I think that's what they call a catch-22. Pretty sure I'm using that right. Maybe. Either way, that's where we got to go. I almost left the spud bar after the first hole, but now I'm happy to have it. Okay, we got that B-roll stuff done. I know I give it to lube tubers pretty good, but uh, there's a lot of work that goes into a, a watchable video. And mine are just scratching the surface of watchable. So when you see all that drone action and B-roll and slow-mo and stuff, give them some credit because uh, it takes a long time and quite a bit of effort. You know, one of the most important things when it comes to ice fishing is, is maintaining your mobility so i'm just going to leave everything in the sleigh here and i don't really have any excuses not to move um you know just want to keep on hopping around until i find fish just keep the bare essentials out and that uh that should do you so i did just drop down though and it looks like there's some um, drop my range a little and let's see look at that business they might be little ones, but not as dumb as I thought, but I don't think these are what we're after, to be honest. They're not worlds bigger than my jig, so they could be perch or just like little silver dollars. Yeah, I ain't playing this game. Maybe in the middle of January I'd fish for these fish, but you sit here and just start shaking for these weasels, you're going to burn your whole day. It's first ice, they're going to be snapping somewhere could be a hundred feet away and you know you don't know if you sit here and piddle around with these little weasels so the switch continues like I said she's no big deal to move there's some at 16 and some at 38 these are just shallow so kind of want to tread lightly if you can they'll spook you hear that auger and they'll just get out of the way I miss my old ice 35 when it comes to moving gear around these forward facing things are they're a big time saver but they're a pain to lug around i promise you that especially when mobility is your game call that one a sink clogger you clean them put all your fish in the sink rinse them off and that one's dangling there right by the drain Okay, well that gives us an idea. Well, that's kind of what I suspected too. At first ice like this, you should not be piddling around. It's just like, find them and catch them. Not sit there and jiggle over a little mark for five minutes and then catch them. Here comes another little one. Oh, rippity wrapped. Ooh, a diamond in the rough. Okay, if this is the biggest one in the pack, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. Those are pumpkin seed sized crappies. Okay. These lakes can be tough because you kind of just have to leave them, those little ones, and just keep moving. I know there's bigger ones in here. Wind. I don't want to have to put a mic on. I got enough things to do here. These stupid weasel crappies keeping me hopping. What do we? You again. Now that's a sink clogger status. They are getting a little bigger though. That one, that one could be licked up. Just hopping around. I got a little tungsten jig. And I didn't even have any 
plastics with me. I'm packing real light. Uh, I just took the tail off a Z-Man finesse shad. And yeah, just fishing. Trying to land on him. <laughs> My little tail. <laughs> Makeshift. Be durable though. I'll never break it. Uh, took his face off a little bit. That's a Bill Dance hook set. So I will keep him. He's not bad. Uh, definitely not going to have a great life with a, with a yap like that. So that's the same size as the last one. The last one's healthy. Let him go. This one will crowns him. Warm up one hand. Brutal. I think I can put an X on this lake. <clears throat> Some of these lakes used to be good and they get a quick pummeling, even though this one's remote. Um, I know it's been fished the last few years and what a freaking difference in the first time I came here uh, to now. A lot of people see a bunch of small crappies and oh it's such a healthy fishery well i think it means quite the opposite um lots of these lakes have kind of seen their their full course they you know they start out virgin and you usually catch some big ones they're usually really good the first few times you go a few folks will fill their pail you know people find your tracks and whatever figure out figure out these lakes and then they get smoked and then the next few years you just get these stunted out lakes that are absolutely loaded with tiny little crappies and you know I think that's why this is kind of the average be like a Minnesota lake now so got to get out the map and put some effort in and find some more lakes because this one's been unless I'm just missing the boat right now and you know there's some good ones right over there that was not one of them. I don't want the one under me. I want the ones coming. Ah! Uh-oh. That one might have been bigger than the ones that are coming. From the left. Got you, Bubba. Oh, boy. Another stunting confirmation. There are definitely a bunch of them. Oh, we're freezing up here. Edible. No, nope, definitely not good when compared to most other crappie fishing in central Canada. Look at this guy. Screaming Willie Beeman. Oh, you're done. Well, I guess we'll just sit here and burn the barn out for a bit. It's not really fun to watch, but let's be honest. Even if they were 14 inches, they're still crappie, so it's still not like anything wild. I'm not going to get a 15 incher here, so. Probably still salvage a lube tube vid out of her. Don't have a bunch of time to do other ones, so this is what you get. Maybe you'll learn a little bit of something. If you're still here after all this struggle and agony, then you may as well do a little subscribe and little like and maybe comment something. Fire me a chirp if you want. Oh no, I lost him. Where will I ever find another nine inch crappie? The original plan for this little lube tube video was to, well, that's the biggest one yet. Was to show you how dumb <laughs> first ice crappies are and how 
you know, how you can catch big ones right now and blah, blah, blah. And just fill up my Sarah Palin with 10 inches, so kind of an opportunity missed. Well, there's pretty much unlimited little ones down there now, so. May as well just whack on them for a bit. like a nine incher, I guess. I don't know. I don't like where this lake's headed though. But holy man, are they loaded. Silver dollar, sink clogger. I almost always use six pound soft fix braid. Oh my God, I saw my chest mount on. Look like an idiot. Um, now the only problem with braid is it's not great in like super cold conditions. It kind of freezes up a little bit more than, um, than like regular mono or floral or whatever. Uh, this is a sweet rod, this is a, 28 inch 13 Widowmaker. This is my first time using it. Really comfortable, really light. And yeah, I'm, I'm into this. It's got, you know, super soft tip and then the backbone deal. So if this lake does show out and has, surprises me with a half decent crappie or, you know, there's walleye in all these lakes and everything like that, then I'll, uh, I'll be happy. That little that little Z-Man plastic I've got. You can just that's the beauty of that the last tech stuff. You can just sit here and pound on these things and just keep dropping and I'm never gonna have to re-rig. Um, you know, unless a toothy comes through or whatever, you know, catch a hundred on it. That one took her a little deep, a little blood action. I mean, these are still fine to eat. I'm just being a little bit of a snob. They're so small. If you get into a little weasel school like this and 20 or 20 plus feet, just leave them. You'll just kill them all doing this, so. We're shallow, they're only out for one second. Um, they'll be fine. <laughs> They're just flying from all angles. It is kind of fun. I mean, I'm probably going to catch 20 or 30 fish today, so I can't complain too much, but. Oh boy. I think it's safe to say that's not a crappie. <laughs> Look at that magnum. It's probably a chain pickerel, maybe a walleye. All right. Got him. Like I mentioned earlier, this Widowmaker's got some backbone because this does happen almost every time you're crappie fishing in Canada. You're going to catch something other than your target species. And could be something cool. Whatever it is, it probably just loves its life down there right now. Bunch of soft boned little seven inch crappies licking them up. I do just have a tiny little tungsten on here, so this probably isn't gonna end real great for either of us. Come on. Sweet if it was a walleye. Oh, it is a big walleye. Oh. Oh my god. Look at that crappie eater. 
<laughs> That's like a 30 incher. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> That's a super bag. <laughs> he's so fat. He's just been hammering on those thin boned little nursery crappies. Look at that thing. Big 30 inch war horse. My little tungsten and finesse shad tail. Man, that is sweet. I was gonna go walleye fishing this morning and there's no way I was gonna catch one like that. So he just come in. This thing obviously eats crappies like crazy in this lake. So he probably just loves his life, but I'm gonna tuck him back and catch a couple more crappies for Sarah Palin. And yeah, sweet. Awesome, awesome first day ice fishing. That's old lady luck come knocking there. But like I said about that Widowmaker, it's got that tip, I was ready, you know, in case this happened with that braided line too, like I'm not toiling around with little two pound mono, so it worked out. That was cool. I thought that was for sure a pike. Just like it was, you know, looked like a 30 inch fish, so. Huh, I wonder how much that thing weighed. Just a bone crushing crappie eater. I've never even caught a walleye in this lake, so. I guess when one thing falters, another thrives, so. It's probably not having to compete with big crappies in here for food source anymore, and it's got all those little weasels to just hammer on, so it probably just loves its life now. It's got a little hook hole in the face and a little, little studio time, but. Other than that, it's probably happy it gets left alone the rest of its life, so. Oof, hands are a little chilly. I got some fleece pockets in this, this Strike Master Pro suit that I'm just waiting for them to activate and warm up my hands here for a bit. But while I'm sitting around, I won't be fishing, so may as well talk to you about the jacket um, and, you know, the suit. Obviously, I said earlier, it's got SOS, so they float. And uh, there's just what the, the other kind of major feature for me about this suit is it's made of ripstop material. Tactical teams, uh, like construction workers, you know, they all use ripstop and uh, it's just good. Like, especially up here in the north, humping around firewood and kind of beating through the backwoods. You, you need something tough. Um, you see guys today wearing like, you know, what looks like insulated garbage bag. Too close to a shore lunch, fire one feral spark or just vaporize your whole suit. So I'm uh, not gonna have that problem. I got it covered in walleye slime now, so uh, it's good. Good lucky suit so far, but uh, check them out. The crappie school in this zone is kind of in rebuild mode after that. I gotta be honest, I don't think catching a nine inch crappie is gonna replace the feeling of a big walleye, so. Probably gonna put the wheels to the road here. I went from hating this lake to getting on a big Christmas tree full of crappies that seems to be coming back here um, to catching a great big walleye so it uh, it all came 360 might be a big crappie Ooh, that's a sassy one sarsaparilla huh shouldn't have missed him Gone it. Dag nab it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all those fish that I've missed since the walleye. Look at that. I must have broke my little tungsten jig off in his mouth. I got no hook point. All right, I'm going home. That's enough of that. Like, sub, all that stuff. Thanks for coming out. 